Hello and welcome to module 6.3. So in this video, we're going to look at the signals peculiar to present and future GPS. So you remember we just looked at the orbits and now we'll look at the signals. So as promised, we'll, we'll look at the frequency spectra of GPS to understand what signals it's sending out. And so you'll see right away more than you're used to looking at. We've been looking at the CA code through the class. There it is, and it's got that sync function, and so that's shown here. And so that's what we're used to looking at, but now we see a whole lot more that we haven't really focused on before. So this is the L1 frequency mentioned down there. GPS also supports the L2 frequency, and What's shown on the left here are the different generations of GPS. So it began with Block 1 satellites. Those were the in initial GPS system that was launched uh, over 30 years ago, believe it or not. Uh, the whole system started. And we're now, now all Block 1 and Block 2 have been decommissioned. And we have Block 2A and 2R, which transmit these signals. So there's signals on L1, there's signals on L2. And the CA code, which we use as civilians on L1, is the only thing we've really focused on in this class. The other signals are they term, they're called P codes, and the P bracket Y stands for an encryption. They're encrypted codes meant for military use. And so they broadcast on L1 and L2 from those particular satellites, 2A and 2R. Then the Next generation satellites, known as 2RM, added an extra signal. And so if you work your way down the slide, you can see what's different. Everything's the same from before except for the added piece, which is something, as, as you can see, is, is a, looks like a CA code. And indeed, it, it is like that. And this is L2C, C for civilian. So the, the US Air Force added a civilian code on the L2 frequency. And this is primarily to support high precision receivers. And by having the two frequencies, you can get better precision. And the kind of receivers that do centimeter level accuracy almost exclusively are dual frequency receivers. So, so all cell phones, et cetera, are single frequency receivers at L1. And all the high precision receivers, like for surveying, et cetera, are dual frequency receivers that use L1 and L2. And then in the last few years, we've had Block 2F satellites. So in a way, you could maybe think of this as the third generation of GPS, although it's a bit confusing because we are going to see something called GPS-3 come later. But the, nonetheless, Block 2F added yet another frequency, L5. And this is a non-encrypted code available to civilians. And so we have this third frequency, L5. And so all new satellites launched now support these three frequencies, L1, L2, and L5. And although all civilian receivers today are L1 only. It's quite possible that in the future you'll see L1, L5 civilian receivers. L5 is a very nice frequency. It's a protected frequency, and which means that nobody else is allowed to transmit anywhere near it. And because of its separation from L1, it has some nice properties. And so it's quite possible you will see dual frequency civilian receivers in the future to get higher accuracy. So that's something to look forward to. And all of these are BPSK encoded. And you can sort of see that just from the frequency spectrum. You see these sync functions all over the place here. And so this is the BPSK signal, a, a simple PRN code modulating a carrier, as we've looked at through the, the class. Then we get to GPS 3, or Block 3. And this is the future GPS. There are no Block 3 satellites at the moment, but there will be in the future. Uh, and starting to launch uh, in a few years from now. And then they will launch them s slowly. GPS satellites last a very long time, so this, the constellations don't change very fast. Uh, current satellites are lasting over 10 years. And so over the course of the next 20 years or so, you'll see the Block 2F satellites slowly be replaced by Block 3. And the primary new thing in Block 3 is this, this so-called BOC encoding. And BOC stands for Binary Offset Carrier. And it's the best way to think about it is BPSK, you remember, was very simple. It was just a PR encode multiplying a carrier wave. And so the phase changed every now and again. 
Bach is like two, one PRN code and another one on top of it. It makes a more complicated frequency spectrum, but it has a special characteristic that it's got two main lobes and nothing in the middle. And so you can have the CA code and the Bach code overlaid at the same center frequency without interfering with each other. And that's the special characteristic of the Bach code. So that gives you now a, a picture of everything in GPS. And, and uh, this is a little bit like uh, in module four where we looked at the uh, receiver architecture. We begin with a complicated picture and then when you break it down, it's really not so complicated. If you just work your way through this diagram as I just did, Anytime you want to look at it in future or explain it to somebody else, you'll see it's, it's really something that's n not nearly so complicated as it first appears. And if you want to know the state of the system at any time from now to the future, a very good place to find it uh, is in GPS World Magazine's online site. The, uh, G if you just look for GPS World, Almanac, and they, they just write that. So if you if you just Google Almanac in GPS World, you will find your way to a single site that collects this current state of all the different GNSS systems, and, and they'll show you a table like this for GPS. Now, you could go to the uh, GPS government site, that's, that's also a good site. That's if you just look for gps.gov, you can certainly find the, the up-to-date information about the GPS system, but there's no equivalent thing for all, each of the other systems. It varies from country to country in ways that you might expect. Some countries are, are less open than others. And so the available information, it's nice to have one place to go to, and the place I go to is this, and look at this almanac, and it's, main, it's kept up to date, and it shows you things like what the, what satellites currently available. So here you see block 2A and 2R, and if we relate that to our previous page, that was the satellites that had transmitted those signals. And if you look at all of that, you'll see that there are 18 operational 2R and 2As still up in space. And then some of these, you'll notice some notes here. There's there's a satellite number and some notes. Those notes, if you go to this page, explain what's going on. And you'll see that this column says usable and there's a blank gap there. So this one's not usable. So why is it still mentioned? If you go look at the notes, you'll see things like uh, that certain satellites have been taken offline on, but are being maintained in their orbits as online spares. So, if a, so it's a satellite that maybe was getting old, but it's still operational and it's maintained as a spare. So GPS has been maintained like this and it's one of the reasons they've managed to keep so many satellites operational, 30, 31, 32, as I mentioned before. And then other things you'll see in these tables, they'll tell you which plane and slot. So you remember in the previous video, we looked at how there were six planes and then the satellites occupy slots in this plane. So the address, if you like, in orbit of each satellite is shown there if you need to know that. And then the different types of satellites, as we discussed. So 2RM, which is the block of satellites that added the L2C code. There are seven of those operational. And then block 2F, the latest that added the L5 signal. There are six of those. We add that all up. There are 31 operational GPS satellites. So that's the end of uh, looking at what characterizes the GPS signals, and then we're going to do the same thing for each of the other constellations through the remainder of this module.